Hey guys, this is a continuation tips to start and level up a farm. Part two. All right, sorry about that rainstorm, guys. I had to get out of there. Anyways, I'm going to continue my thoughts. Uh, let's see, I'm point number nine. Um, if you're selling direct to consumer, let's not try to beat the lowest price. Instead, let's try to have a premium product. Let's try to have a product that is better than theirs. Um, and let's sell ours at a premium because it's not the same product. Ours is not, uh, my cows are not on a feed lot being shoved through there as quickly as possible in a very unhealthy manner. Instead, they're grass fed. They're, they're actually worth more. So let's treat them like they're worth more because they are. Um, anyways, we'll move on point made don't try to beat the lowest person's price and be okay be okay with losing a few customers because you don't have the lowest price on the market be okay with that all right um number 10 uh be a copycat uh i'm just gonna say it and shamelessly as well be a copycat if you want to do a certain type of farming find someone that does that farming or better yet find an old person that's retired from that farming because they have years and years of knowledge and they uh, they often have spare time on their hands and so they usually will not mind talking to you about the farming that they did and how they did it and where they did it and the timing of when they did it and uh they just they're a fountain of knowledge guys uh, these, uh, but it doesn't have to be an elderly person. I'm just saying that's a, uh, that's a really good, uh, person to go to as an elderly person that's been doing it for years. Get an idea of how they do it. I would recommend start farming in the manner that they do it. Uh, there's a reason they do it that way and it's because that works. Now, later on, you can change things up as you gain confidence and, and, uh, just, add to your as you add to your skills you can try new things and branch out uh from conventional but I, especially in the beginning i i would i would be a complete copycat and i would do it shamelessly um let's see tip number 11 oh and by the way guys these tips are not just for for cattle farming they're all for farming in general now some of my examples may be specific to cattle farming but I promise you, if you apply, if you apply these, these tactics and these rules to any kind of farming, it's going to increase your efficiency and it, it's, it's going to help you build your operation. Um, so number 11, it's not even really specific to farming. It, it's kind of just a tip for life. Um, a fool thinks that he is wise and a wise man knows that he is a fool so guys let's go into this with some humility let's accept the fact that we don't know everything let's accept the fact that we need to learn to make this work if you start your farm and don't do any learning and any studying you're gonna fail uh, don't go into it thinking you know how things should be um, an example of that is uh, one of my um, property owners that I've worked with in the past he, he um I was renting hayland from him and he thought he needed to tell me on uh he needed to tell me when the the hay needs cut and how short he wants the grass to be but that's not his choice and it's not my choice either it's mother nature that we're working with oh there's a cat over there it's mother nature that we're working with and we need to try to learn to work within the bounds of how she wants to be naturally if you work with her um if you work with her then it's way easier than working against her because if you try to force it to do you try to force the animals or the land to do something that naturally it doesn't want to do you're probably going to fail at that just say it all right uh let's go on to the next tip uh if y'all will just bear with me one one second okay so back back to the equipment thing um 
as I said earlier, you should limit the amount of equipment you buy to begin with. Uh, this kind of goes the opposite of that. Um, I will warn you that equipment is often best used in pairs. So if you're buying a tractor, it's really helpful to have two tractors. I'm not so saying go buy three, four, or five. I'm saying that two, tra two tractors on a farm is a really great place to start. Uh, for example, you can have a smaller tractor that's very efficient, uh, maybe about a 40 to 50 horsepower tractor, and then a larger tractor that's powerful, maybe about 85 horsepower. Um, that's if you're doing cattle or hay, a hay operation, which um, that doesn't just apply to tractors. It applies to trailers, it applies to trucks. Uh, so equipment uh, is often best used in pairs. Okay, uh, we kind of touched on this earlier, but if you want your land to be fertile next year, you need to treat it well this year. Uh, like I said earlier about the holistic approach, uh, what is good for the soil is also uh, good for the microbes, and what is good for the microbes is good for the plants. What's good for the plants is good for the animals. And what's good for the animals, that's good for you and me when we consume the product. Uh, tip number uh, 16, do not buy more equipment than you can afford to maintain. I know it's so tempting to go in here to the John Deere dealership and pick out the most beautiful brand new 2020 model. I, I would suggest you don't do that. And I would suggest you not buy a ton of, of equipment. And I also would suggest that you try to look for equipment in the sweet spot. It's, it's what I call the sweet spot. So if you're wanting to actually make money, the less you spend on your equipment within reason, without buying junk, um, the quicker you're gonna make money. So I would look for a tractor in the sweet spot where it's old enough and has got enough hours on it to be depreciated greatly from what its price was new, but at a point to where it still has a lot of hours of service with it. It may be a different age and a different amount of hours for you than it is for me. But for me, uh, when I'm, I'm buying a tractor, I like to buy a tractor that is about 10 to 15 years old. And I like to buy a tractor that's got about 1,000 hours on it. Um, not more than 1,200, 1,500 hours. Uh, these machines, you can definitely expect them to last 4,000 hours, but if you treat them well, they can last 10,000 hours. Uh, but try to look for equipment in that sweet spot where it's depreciated a lot from what it was new but still has a lot of life left in it. Okay, tip number 17 is wear as many hats as you can, but be careful with that. Uh, what do I mean by wear hats? Well, you go to Walmart and you buy as many different hats as you can, and that's all there is to that one. Success, baby, boom. I'm just kidding, guys. Okay, so what I mean by wear many hats is you need to do as much of the work on your farm yourself as you can. You need to take care of as many different things as you can. So you need to uh, learn basic maintenance on your equipment. You need to learn to change your hydraulic fluid. You need to learn to grease your machines. That one's very important. Tractors live on grease and oil. Uh, Without it, they break down so fast. So you need to learn to do basic maintenance on your machines, maybe even learn to do some basic repairs on your machines. It doesn't have to be nothing crazy, guys. Uh, switching out some fuses, anyone can switch a fuse out. Um, try, try to do as many jobs on your farm as possible. Because I promise you, if I hired someone to work for me every time I needed something done, I'd never make any money. Okay, um, tip number 18, this is more toward, towards those long-term goals as, as we grow our operation. Um, I, I'll, I'll take a, a sidestep for a second. What even, what even certifies me to talk about this stuff? Because I don't rely just on farming for income, do I? No, I don't, but I will tell you this. I've been in farming my whole life. I've been around it my whole life. I've lived on a farm for most of the years of my life. Um, 
I started my own operation about four years ago. And in the past four years, I went from 0% of my income coming from farming to most of my income coming from farming. 